I'm Todd Shrupp with this week's Beyond 140. When 140 characters on Twitter won't quite do, I answer your questions in full with no time limit. And here are our questions for this week. Five of the best, I think, that we received. And thank you for all of the response. Remember, if you want to participate on a future edition of Beyond 140, follow me on Twitter at ToddTVG. And then with your question, put the hashtag Beyond 140. Our first question this week comes from Chad Ehrenstorf, and he says, does Southern California really need horse racing all year long with the loss of Betfair Hollywood Park? I have to tell you, Chad, I was more in your camp because I think you're suggesting less is more with racing, and I still think that is true of a lot of jurisdictions around the country, but I do think as the racing calendar has changed in Southern California, they finally have the right amount of days. I also think because of the changes, now we're going into markets where we we should have been a lot longer for thoroughbred racing like what's going on at Los Alamitos in Orange County. So I think they've got a good handle on it right now in Southern California. And remember, there was a time where they were racing Wednesday through Sunday. Most of the time now, it is a four-day racing week, Thursday to Sunday. So I think the Southern California racing calendar, number of days, right where it should be. Our second question on Beyond 140 comes from Eric Adams. Which European horse has the best slashed worst chance at winning either Breeders' Cup Day, and when does TVG coverage start over the weekend? Well, let's start with European best chances. We'll keep it positive. I had to go to my colleague, Simon Bray, because I trust his opinion, and he has been waiting for Telescope. You may recall, Telescope was second in the Judmont International, but trainer Sir Michael Stout said he's been pointing for the Breeders' Cup turf all year long, and as Simon told me, when Sir Michael Stout points for a major international race all year long, that horse usually comes through. So Telescope is probably your best shot of the Europeans, but let's be honest, in all the grass races, the Europeans are absolutely going to dominate once again over the two days in the Breeders' Cup. As for TVG's coverage of the Breeders' Cup, well, that started a while ago with special segments, but the most anticipated show will be Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. It's the Works Breeders' Cup 2014. That's 8 a.m. Pacific time each day. There will be numerous re-airings, but you can't miss it. If you're playing the Breeders' Cup, you got to watch the Works. Our third question comes from Brian McLean. What is the biggest Breeders' Cup score for you? I have to tell you, they haven't been huge over the years. Uh, about two seasons ago, I was able to uh, connect my opinion in the Breeders' Cup Classic with a nice pick four of 2,600. I see you pointed out how you did at Lone Star with a pretty nice exacta and the mile on the grass. But, uh, yeah, Breeders' Cup, I'm still waiting for a huge score. But 2,600 a couple of years ago wasn't too bad for uh, what came in in the Breeders' Cup Classic. Okay, question four uh, this week is actually very very similar to two that I received. So I want to mention two people who sent this in. I handicap horses sent in perhaps the formation of a league of racetracks, i.e. the NFL, the NBA, Major League Baseball, to coordinate marketing efforts and elevate the sport. And then also sent in by uh, the handle and one of my favorite handles uh, on Twitter of people who follows me, at the Four Socks. You'll have to check out his site. He'll understand it. He sent in this question, do you think the sport needs a commissioner? We get this question a lot. And as someone who's been around the industry and watched the mistakes the industry has made and the things they've done right, an autonomous commissioner has been needed since day one. The closest we ever got was when the National Thoroughbred Racing Association came in, much like the idea they would be the NFL or the NBA, Major League Baseball, that type of organization for horse racing. Tim Smith was the first commissioner, and he came the closest. The problem with that concept from its beginning as far as having a commissioner who could actually implement change is that with the National Thoroughbred Racing Association, they relied on the dues that their members paid. And so if a member didn't like something, they could just withhold their dues. And so it never really took off the way that it should. If horse racing is truly going to take the model of other sports, you have to have a strong commissioner, someone who can affect change. Think about it if a commissioner could say, this is what we need to do medication-wise, and everyone had to follow, or this is what we need to do with licensing. There are so many big issues out there for horse racing, and horse racing has to be willing to say, we put our faith in this person to lead us, and we'll follow their direction. We've tried. It hasn't happened, but I am with you. That is needed. Both I handicap horses and uh, at the Four Sox, you're absolutely right. Commissioner long overdue in horse racing. Our final question comes from Scott Shapiro. If you bought a million-dollar horse meant to go long on the grass, who would train? 
Well, I noticed a lot of people already weighed in on Twitter about this, and most of you mentioned American-based trainers. I'd go to Andre Fab. He's one of the greatest European trainers of all time, and uh, he has rewritten the record books for the Prix de l'Arc de Triomphe. So, yeah, if I have a horse who wants to go a marathon distance on the grass, I'm heading that uh, horse over to Europe. Although, obviously, names like Graham Motion mentioned here in America would make a lot of sense as well. These were great questions this week on Beyond 140. Remember, if you want to send in your question, send it to me at Todd TVG on Twitter with hashtag Beyond 140.